It is 9 p.m. on the East Coast, 8 p.m. here inside the Milwaukee Theater. Welcome to the Republican presidential debate here on the Fox Business Network. Candidates, as we gather tonight in this very august theater, just outside and across the country, picketers are gathering as well. They're demanding an immediate hike in the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Just a few hours ago, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo proposed doing the same for all state workers, the first governor to do so. Mr. Trump, as the leading presidential candidate on this stage, and one whose tax plan exempts couples making up to $50,000 a year from paying any federal income taxes at all, are you sympathetic to the protesters' cause since a $15 wage works out to about $31,000 a year? I can't be, Neil. And the reason I can't be is that we are a country that is being beaten on every front, economically, militarily. There is nothing that we do now to win. We don't win anymore. Governor Bush, yeah. almost 40% of Americans are without a job and are not looking. Many have given up. That's what the participation rate tells us. You've said your policies will drive the economy back to 4% growth, yep. which we haven't seen since the year 2000. What specific regulations would you change, and how will that lead to jobs and growth? First of all, we could get to 4% growth. Uh, the new normal of 2% puts huge demands on government. The reason why we have structural deficits is that more and more people are relying on government and the growth that, that uh, we don't have makes, makes the deficit grow. A 4% growth strategy starts with tax reform and the proposal that I've laid out is the one the Wall Street Journal editorial board has said is the most pro-growth of all the proposals out there. We cut the, we eliminate a lot of deductions and cut the rates down, a corporate rate of 20% which puts us 5% above, below that of China uh, and allows us full, full expensing of investing it would create an explosion of investment back into this country, creating higher wage jobs. Uh, and so that's part of it. On the regulatory side, I think we need to repeal every rule that Barack Obama has in terms of work in progress. Every one of them. And start over. For those that are already in existence, the regulation of the internet, uh, we have to start over, but we ought to do that. The Clean Power Act, we ought to repeal that and, and start over on that. The Waters of the United States Act, which is going to be devastating for agriculture and many industries, we should repeal that. We should repeal the rules because the economic costs of this far exceed the social benefit. And if we're serious about being serious about the high growth, then we have to recognize that small businesses right now, more of them are closing than, than, are, than are being set up. Hillary Clinton has said that Barack Obama's policies get an A. Really? One in ten people right now aren't working or have given up altogether, as you said. That's not an A. One in seven people are living in poverty. That's not an A. One in five children are on food stamps. That is not an A. It may be the best that Hillary Clinton can do, but it's not the best America can do. Thank you, sir. Ms. Fiorina, while you've all pointed out how weak uh, the current recovery has been and how disappointing by any historical standards. In the general election, the Democrats will inevitably ask you and voters to compare the recent president's jobs performance. Now, in seven years under President Obama, the U.S. has added an average of 107,000 jobs a month. Under President Clinton, the economy added about 240,000 jobs a month. Under George W. Bush, it was only 13,000 a month. If you win the nomination, you'll probably be facing a Democrat named Clinton. How are you going to respond to the claim that Democratic presidents are better at creating jobs than Republicans? Well, first of all, I must say, as I think about that question, I think about a woman I met the other day. I would guess she was 40 years old. She had several children. 